Okay, so this is Johnson Street now with the back scene fitted and the layout back um, back at home because unfortunately um, a couple of weeks ago the the, um, the quite wonderful man who was in the process of putting the finishing touches to my layout um, sadly passed away um, so um, the layout has had to return home slightly ahead of schedule so there's a few things that are still not done um the ole as you can see it here is kind of mapped out with some um rather old looking um um hornby um signal gantries that that do actually very similarly represent some of the ole you see on the west coast main line particularly those gantries there that one there the gray one um so at Crew Electric, sorry, at Crew Basford, um, there are several um, there are several places where the electric lines come to an end over the track work, and they have what is like a I'm quite sure how I'm going to demonstrate this, but like the wire runs into the gantry, um, and then the trains can run beyond that if it's like a diesel train. Um, or an electric would just have to come as far as the gantry. Rachel uh, at um, um, the um, Angel of Crew will know what I'm talking about, and and, and a lot of um, rail enthusiasts who who follow the electric network will understand. Um, so so yeah, so the layout is back, um, back at home, which um, is is um, a bit a, a strange sort of consolation because obviously it would have come back here eventually um but obviously the ole um would have been finished with what it you will soon see as um the end brass forms that will be where the um temporary gantries are positioned roughly um but it'll look the um i don't know what the right way to describe it would be highly detailed and very accurate in appearance some might say the mutt's nuts or um, there are other examples that might be more appropriate um, so what we're looking at here is basically the area of the layout which is the electrified area so coming into the uh, into the depot where this gantry is here that is basically the access on, out onto the west coast main line uh, johnson street is kind of sat on a fictitious branch line that that comes off the west coast main line and there are numerous places on the west coast main line where johnson street could effectively be positioned um so um stafford's got a couple of great examples just north of stafford station there are there is a line that veers away to the left hand side which is known as doxy junction and there's a line that also veers to the right that trains used to run out towards utoxida um so there's also places a bit further down the line on the wolverhampton line um where the, where the, there used to be railway lines that disappeared that are no longer in use uh so yeah john that's the backstory of of the layout as it is so trains disappearing under that gantry there would be running out onto the west coast main line so as we look at it here the three track shed um that will have the electric wires running into the shed uh, and terminating beyond the shed um, in a gantry that's similar to this particular one here, but for three tracks and not two. Um, so we've got those lovely um, funky um, buffer stop lights that um, sit at the end of the buffer stops there, and they're present on pretty much all of the buffer stops on the layout. Um, so they are. There are inspection pits in both sheds in this particular shed. The lanes two and three have a, have um, inspection pits that are lit up. Um, and I think the left-hand lane pit lights don't aren't lit up. Uh, the 390s on the shed today are 9026, 9039 and 9024 otherwise known, known fondly on my channel as Bumblebee One, Backbone and Malcolm. Uh, so as we move a bit further away from the layout, we've got um, a access road that runs round to the electric shed. 
um, a building that we're seeing the back of here, which is like a regional office for DB Cargo. Uh, and then we've got a parking space next to the building, possibly for the security guard um, or the managing director, somebody like that, possibly. Um, they've obviously got the barriered access to the yard um, going the uh, road to that goes to the left and also to the right uh, to the right takes us under the uh, rail access to the what we call the long-term shed um, and also the where the um, diesel fueling point is and there'll also be space in the future uh, there'll be a what a long-term stored loco likely to be a class 90 um, and I'm gonna have it deliberately weathered to be the most muckiest grimiest um, EWS stroke DB cargo class 90 that there is out there uh, so it might even have the pantograph stripped off it possibly some of the, the side panels a little bit like one of the locos at crew electric uh, so this is the long-term shed. I haven't quite got as far as getting all the um, Backman TMD um, kit components out, uh, but there's some lifting jacks are in there already, uh, as are the lighting inspection pits that um, Ian, otherwise known as Amateur Man on RM Web, uh, had done, and also the great work he'd done with regards to my hard standing area, which is just quite perfect really um he's done a really great job with that aspect of things um so when i eventually get around to just touching up the fine details that barrier that um barrier um thing will be sitting where it should be like this just flush with the um other one again it's just little details that just need to be touched up on uh there so We've got the road deck, it obviously needs the actual um, carriageway detailing in. We've got McDonald's, because let's face it, we all need a McDonald's in our life, don't we? Um, and also a couple of relief buildings. This was sort of designated initially to be a postal sorting office, but I decided to sort of take it down a slightly different road um, with the relief buildings um, and what, what, what appears to be like a garage. Um, might have to get some sort of branding for that garage area um something local something that means something and also an office building um on the edge of an industrial estate uh, so yeah mcdonald's the highway tyneside express transport vehicle taken back to my northern themes um and the layout itself so what i've done is i have Got those three uh, DB90s on the shed. I do have a few other uh, DB Cargo Class 90s, which you'll see in due course if you haven't already. And also, because this is DCC, the um, the magician, Ian, who was de dealing with the layout, has gone as far as doing all the under, under, um, under layout DCC stuff. So some of the stuff under there is just beyond my comprehension is the, is the truthful way of describing it. Uh, the bus is on there, and obviously we've got point motors connected into that, and I think those DCC concept things are boosters that basically um, f make the layout work better. <laughs> That's all I understand it as. Um, I'm kind of the, I was kind of the person doing all the, um, coming up with all the creative ideas as to what how the layout should look, um, and Ian was the man who was helping me fulfill my dreams on the layout on the layout front with his knowledge of DCC and also his detailing skills. Uh, so in all likelihood, I'd probably find uh, look to find somebody else who can help me finish off the OLE. Um, and I was just talking on um, um, the Angel of Crew YouTube channel earlier on um, at Rachel's um, I think it was near Crew Bassford Hall bit, um, stream that she was doing earlier uh, regarding the DCC um, system and how it's now having spent a, a couple of days trying to figure out what Ian had done with how the DCC system works. Um, so 
um, as a lot of people who model DCC obviously have different kinds of controllers um, I a long long time ago decided I was going to have the Backman Dynamis um, so let me just um, move that out of the way uh, so uh, so yes yeah, so in my wonderful uh, DB pad that I found on eBay um, I have a list of how the actual um, how the actual point motors work in relation to the layout as such. So from the DCC controller, uh, as I initially looked at this and thought, oh my God, this is going to be terrible, but actually it's not that bad. Um, so to initiate the point motors, we just simply select this option here on the DC, on the controller. And from our list of uh, points that are on the layout so number one is lane three and three-way access point out and in so I have to kind of remember what these are a little bit because I did these yesterday and they're still a bit ropey as to which ones these are so let's just test this I have to, put the I have to remember to keep putting the controller in in the view of the terminal So what we're seeing here, just for, for clarity, is this point here is what I've deemed a point one. And we're seeing the point change. So this is giving locos access to lane three of the shed where Malcolm is currently sat. And when we click this, there's two things happening here. So again, this is Ian's ingenuity with the DCC system. Uh, so when that point changes to access lane three, as we're seeing there, just, just put it back. When I change it back to, to give access to lane three, you'll notice that with it being currently accessed for lane two, this lane here that leads on to where Backburn is, you'll notice that also the point here is set for the storage line that sits at the end of what we call lane three, which is where Malcolm is sat. So when we switch the point over, you'll notice that this point also is programmed in to change as well, so that the, the lane from where Malcolm is, the access is facilitated. Okay, so this is one of the functions of DCC controlling the points through your controller. So each each point on the layout has a different number on my list of points. Also, a similar arrangement happens here regarding access to the left-hand holding side in lane, uh, which is the left hand of these, these two sidings here. So these points here regarding access to that particular siding and also access to the head shunt line, this line here, this particular line. The points are set up on a similar configuration here as well, so that when the points are set for access to the Holden siding, the, the, the second point is set that way as well. If we then enable, the, enable access to the Holden siding, this point will automatically trip to go the other way so loco is coming out of the long-term maintenance line which is this line here the non-electrified line when the points are set so the trains can come out of here or go into there that point there automatically switches as well so very a <laughs> little bit of clever work by Ian there um, to configure that so that the system works this way um, Alas, he is gone, but he will never be forgotten. It's my intention that when I get my Acura Scale Class 92 in EWS 3 Beasties, that I'm actually going to have the logo named Ian Ray. Uh, after my good friend. Okay, so that's the plan with regards to the, the Acura Scale EWS Class 92. Sorry, 92. Uh, so yeah, so this is just a bit of an overview of where we are at, the, at this moment in time. Uh, so I will 
put a running session on a little later on uh, in the week um, depending on how confident I am about doing these things um, so just uh, that's the one of my 66's 66009 I believe that one is uh, I do have a couple of others as well all uh, the three of them in DB Cargo Red okay that's Johnson Street for now talk to you soon